and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube. For our first budget deck of the day, we're going to be playing five different budget decks, all the mono colors. You know, as you can see here, mono white, mono blue, mono black, red, and green. Doing a budget deck with each one. I've had a lot of people ask for budget decks. So the criteria that I came up with to um, determine if a deck is, a, or like to, to make a, the budget decks is, uh, we're going to have no more than eight rares in the deck, so two play sets of rares, and no more than two copies of Mythics. So that, that's what I'm using. Uh, so I'm trying to make it so if you're building the deck, it's not going to use tons and tons of rares and Mythic wild cards. Um, but that's, that's what we're doing. And, of course, you know you, you can always make these more budget if you need to. Um, but we have, uh, so for our rares, we got three Unbreakable Formation, four Venerate, Luxodon, and a Castle Iron Veil. Again, you know, if you so like that's eight eight rares. Um, again, you can make it less, but that's that's like the the criteria that I'm going with. So like two play sets of rares and then two mythics. I'm going uh, with two Elspeths for the mythics. Some of them are less, um, you know, but that's I'm playing at maximum those. Uh, but this deck, it's all about going wide. Uh, we have all sorts of one drops in here. We have what twenty three one drops. And we're trying to just play lots of one drops. Raise the alarm makes multiple bodies. Elspeth can make multiple bodies. So we're trying to go wide, and then use Heraldic Banner as as a semi anthem effect, giving uh, or at least pumping the power of all of our creatures, plus adding mana to help us cast Elspeth. I think that that's pretty important there. Um, and then we also have Venerate Luxodon that puts counters on all of our our creatures that it convokes. And unbreakable formation, putting more counters on them, giving them indestructible vigilance. So we're just kind of like all in aggro here with this budget mono white deck. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to be playing these in ranked. You know, we're, we're going to be giving them the best test. Um, I'm not expecting like these decks to be to do super well. I'm hoping to go 500. That's that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, but let's uh let's go ahead and give this a try. So we're gonna be playing some matches over in ranked with our budget mono white deck. Here we go. No, um, no. The only the budget decks are these these five monocolor ones, um, and the reason why I'm I'm doing monocolor ones is so that you don't have to use wild cards on shock lands and and you know trying to make like the mana base really good. So because you know like these are just going to be monocolor decks. Um, the the other decks today are not are not budget decks, uh, but that's how we're, we're starting it today with the with the five budget decks. Little Pe Pegasus cannot attack on its own. I don't have Deckmaster up. Okay, Storm, you're playing alongside right now. And you got your first opponent was Rakdos Sacrifice. Ooh. Mayhem Devil is not an easy card to beat. You have to just have a really fast hand. <laughs> yeah, if they have, if they have. Yeah, Priest, Mayhem Devil, Oven, all that stuff. Yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, especially Mayhem Devil is just you're not being that. Taya, thanks so much for that resub. So our storm count today is three. I am behind on that. 
Third sub of the day. Yeah, Woe Strider is awesome. This looks like Teamer Reclamation. Okay. Good game. Our deck's playing all in. And losing to sweepers. Yep, yep. Sweepers are our downfall. Definitely. I'm kind of surprised they didn't attack, but I guess I'll see it as lifelink. So I guess it makes sense. They want the auto pay to use my mana. I do not want to use my mana. So I have to manually tap all these things. And now we have, we can sacrifice Al Seed also to protect something that, if we want to. Yeah, they could have attacked with the first strike, but then Al Seed has lifelink. So like they deal one damage, but then I just gain a life back. So all attacking would do would, would have just dropped their life total one point. Does an all-out attack make sense? They block... They have Annex block Alseed. They maybe have, like, Fervent Champion, Trump the Venerate Luxodon, and get another 1-1 one -one instead. Like, lose, like, my Alseed and do 4 damage. Yeah, our budget mono red deck that we're going to be playing later has all these cards. Well, I don't have castle. But my my two rares that I have in that deck for the playsets are Fervent Champion and Runaway Steamkin. I don't have Cavalcade either. So I'm trading Al Seed for Annex. They get, but then they also get two one ones. Then Annex is out of there.
you're two and two so far, Storm. Man, you're going. You're here. Games are going a lot faster than mine. I'm. You know, I'm still zero and one. This has been a long match for the like against the red deck because we're like stabilized. It can't quite get ahead. Well, that's probably game over. I needed Unbreakable Formation or Heraldic Banner. Well, no, Heraldic Banner wouldn't have done it. I need I need Unbreakable Formation. No, that, that still wouldn't have really done it, would it? Let's see. Yeah, I guess Unbreakable Formation would have... Yeah, Unbreakable Formation would have done it. It would not have, like, won me the game, but I would not have died immediately. Heraldic Banner would not have been good. I needed... Yeah, I needed Formation. Alright, we're 0-2. Sweepers are tough, and then having drawing six lands is also tough. Those are those are our ways that make it difficult to win. Facing sweepers and drawing six lands, and so far, like those are those are our two downfalls for sure. All right, I hope this is not Jeskai Fires. I hope it's something else. Because Jeskai Fires, speaking of sweepers. Um, like I want to pay the, I want to play the two loyal Pegasus. Yeah, I, th I think I do. But if there's just Clarion here, like that's just. A huge bummer, obviously. Yay, no Clarion. Right on schedule. No, I am not making this up as I go. more difficult heroes rally to me I know I'm not 
playing around a sweeper. But I mean, I, I could like, you know, sit back and play raise the alarm again, but then I'm just not like really ever playing these other one drops. I, I kind of think this is my best option to be honest and just hope there's not a sweeper and then and then we get to hold up the instant speed stuff. If there is a sweeper, I can still reload with another Pegasus and Healer's Hawk. Doesn't seem like my opponent has a sweeper for how they're trying to decide what to do. They're thinking about it. Okay. I don't know if they guess they just got disconnected, I guess. I'd be surprised if it was a rage quit. I guess it's a disconnected. Especially for how it's given them all this extra time, it, it's probably disconnected. All right, Storm, take care. Come on, opponent. And the clock's going down again. Three PM in Chile. I know Chile was two hours ahead of me. All right, we gotta win. Seven PM in Barcelona. And it's also seven PM in Germany. Whoa. It's noon in the US Midwest. So that means that Germany can tell the future. It's seven PM over there, it's one PM here. Should probably leave with Healer's Hawk. Get the lifelink damage in immediately. Do we do we count that? Does that count? Is that somebody that just like saw their you know like their hand? They're like, oh, I I kept a hand against only control and I'm not gonna beat the aggro deck. Whoa, we gotta close this. Yeah, like best best of three, that's probably not a win. Is that a win in best of one? Hmm. 
kind of have some mixed mixed results. Should I count? Let's do a poll. Should I count? Do I count that as a win? Yes or no? You have 30 seconds. Yes or no? Does that count as a win? Do you think do you think they needed to go, I guess, in best of one, or do you think they saw like Hunted Witness and they're like, ah, oh, I don't have a hand that I don't have a hand with the sweeper and they're like all my cards are dead because I just kept all counter spells or something, or I don't know what, kept a really slow hand. All right, looks like 14 people said yes, 10 people said no. So I guess we count that. Had a couple of cheap wins here. Is there some is there something about best of one like the people don't actually play or something? Okay, here we go, finally. What? It's like, all right, we have five cards, and then let's generate the two worst possible cards to have with these five. Oh, you're, you're Elspeths. Here you go. Here's some Elspeths. Um, so I only get five cards. No, my rule is, um, two mythics, and I did eight rares, so like two play sets of rares. On land. Wow, that's the worst draw. And <laughs> best of one, I never play games that have multi five. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely tough to win on five cards. These have not been very good games. Yeah, we have had not had very good games. We had we had the one good game against the red deck earlier. That, that mold of five, we just didn't have 
didn't really have playable stuff. <clears throat> I do not think Elspeth is worth it in the side of blue-eyed control. I think it should be in the main deck. I've been very impressed at again playing against Elspeth in blue eye control. Alright, we'll keep the six. Cap. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I should be doing I should be playing raise the alarm, but oops. Played that too fast. Escapist. All right. Well, then, then sideboard's fine. Then, definitely think it's it's worthy of playing. yet again just got our two lands would have unbreakable formation to protect against the sweeper this isn't a fight you can win. but we don't this might be a bad idea Looks like this one's over. We've not had good games at all with this deck. Oh, I've done the hero thing. It's <laughs> not at all. Yeah, there's there's 20 lands in the deck. I mean, I mulliganed and put a third land down to the bottom. And then, you know, we've drawn, since then, we've drawn Unbreakable Formation, Elspeth, Banner, and not a land. We've had a lot of games like this. We haven't been able to play. You know, we've just been had two lands, and then we had, you know, game earlier where we had like six lands. We haven't had like the curve out game at all. So. 
I'm pretty sure Heraldic Banner gets countered. Basically just holding up Unbreakable Formation. You know, like they've they've just been holding up three or four mana all the time here, just basically holding up counter magic. Yep. Yeah, if they I mean if they play Dream Trawler, I lose, obviously. I I mean I've already like this game's been over for a long time. It doesn't really seem like they have a sweeper. Maybe I should just let them counter the banner. Yeah, I'll just let them counter banner. Nope, maybe they do have a sweeper. If you have a sweeper, you, you don't need to worry about banner at all. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, sub battle stream was pretty close. Ended up winning, but it but team chat did really well. I don't remember exactly what the score was, but it was close. I train every day. No one is more prepared to hone your prowess. Unfortunately, Unbreakable Formation costs 5 mana, because it's by the Conqueror's Death. Sorry, I'm late. I have just the trick for this. So much for all these rares and mythics that aren't doing anything. <laughs> hey, what's up, Repton3000? Like Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. I feel like, you know, like playing these games, 
it looks like Mono White's in a horrible position in best of one. Like, it's just gotten to be in a really bad position. I think this this may be our worst budget deck. Because it, it seems like there's, all there is is just Mono Red and Sweepers. Is, like, is that all there is in best of one? Is just Mono Red Sweepers? Like, those, those are your two archetypes? Because that's not a good spot for Mono White to be. Yeah, the, the life gain version just required too many mythics. Like, you really need, a, you know, a Johnny's and stuff like that. And Heliod, I think, is a mythic. I looked at that, but that, that was just too many. It wasn't good for budget. Um, it's definitely not 80% mono red. I think, like, it's, it's not that. But it does seem like it's basically just mono red and... Sweep decks with sweepers. This is maybe like gruel. Yeah. That was a good card. That's a good card. That's what our deck's trying to do. That's what we were trying to do. Just you know, play a bunch of creatures, Luxodon, get the anthem, and then attack for a bunch. That's what our deck does. We're gonna play two more. We're gonna play nine matches. Uh, what do we got? Ooh. Oh. Uh. Not as good. We need we need another one drop. I thought that was raise the alarm with the formation. At first. So Stomping Ground, Sphinx of Foresight, not Chess Guy Fires, looks like Teamer Fires. Go Luxodon, go! There we go, too much power. All right, we just faced two decks that were not mono red and did not have sweepers. And we played Luxodon. A couple of wins there. It looks like we got a Corset 2020 pack to crack open. 
So it was a rare, but I already have all the rares, so we got 20 gems in this stead. Yeah, yep, best of one, you can't really play mid-range. When it's just one game, you can't really have a bunch of interaction for everything in the format with one game. You need to... You need to kind of stick to the edges. You need to either be aggro, control... <laughs> Keep track of wins and losses going first and second. Yeah, yeah. that's the other thing about uh, um, best of one. You definitely want to go first, that's for sure. You are incorrect, Toti. Said, I don't think decks using Ember Cleave are considered aggro. That is incorrect. They are considered aggro. All right, we need one more land, so then we can get Banner. Looks like we got a Mirror. One more land, we get Banner, and then the Banner can have us cast Elspeth. So we need one more land. Yay, land. So I don't think I want to trade my hawk for their hawk. Because I'm going to be playing Elspeth next turn and doing the minus one and giving both of my flyers plus two, plus one until end of turn. Huh. Well, that kind of changes things. That changes things. That was a really good draw, because now the healer's hawk and loyal pegasus, like now they have two toughness as far as blocking healer's hawk goes. That was a great draw. So Alcide can give the healer's hawk pro white. And now we can even block Heliod with it. Larun Enforcer cannot ta tap their Healer's Hawk. Because it can only tap creatures with power 2 or greater. So by attacking there, all they did was just give me 3 life. Is it not just exclamation point budget? Are 
for sure. Well, can you change that, Candice? Okay, anyway, so we are... Um, <clears throat> so we had, we ended up going five and four. We actually you know strung together a bunch of wins there in a row. Remember our first two wins were were pretty uh, meh, like people like you know getting disconnected and stuff like that. Um, but then yeah, we got to see the power there of Venerade, Lux Dunn, and Unbreakable Formation in, in some of those other ma those last three matches. Um, you know, Elspeth. Uh, you know, if you don't want to use the mythics on Elspeth, I think that's a, I think that's probably okay. Maybe play a couple removal spells, as we saw. Like my opponent have like that glass casket. Maybe this deck needs like two glass caskets or something. If, if I was just thinking of like something else to play instead of Elspeth, if if you don't want to use the mythics on Elspeth, but if you actually can hit the land drops and actually cast Elspeth on curve against the sweeper decks, it gives you a lot better chance because you don't need to overextend when you have Elspeth. If you, you know, if you have like two creatures in play, you just do the minus one and then you're, you're attacking for four extra damage with that minus one. And so your opponent has to use their sweeper whenever they use their sweeper, then you get to do the minus two and make two more creatures. Elspeth's pretty, you know, pretty good against those decks with sweepers. It's just, actually casting Elspeth on curve we saw that we struggled with um, especially if you have a ban you know if you get to curve banner into Elspeth then you're doing a lot more damage um, so there we go so that's budget mono white all right we got four other colors of budget decks to get to um, definitely looked better there towards the end uh, you know we we definitely struggled there for you know some of those games we had some bad mana issues that's just going to happen with best of one so we're going to be moving on to budget mono blue all right so that's budget mono white um you know if you're watching on youtube leave those comments let me know uh how you know what you know as we start the the uh um this series here let me know what you think of it let me know what, what you think of my definition of budget having two play sets of rares so eight rares and two mythics if that um is budget enough or not and you know all that kind of stuff um, if you if you want to add a land, you could probably drop in. I I don't think you really want to add a land, honestly. But if you would add a land, you'd probably drop either either Alcide or um, Law Rune Enforcer or one of the threes or fours or Banner or Elspeth. If you want to add a, a land drop one of those I'd, I'd probably drop a law rune enforcer if we're adding a land because that makes it easier to play these things all right so there's budget mono white all right so uh, thank you so much for watching and i will see you for the next video